All right, people are coming in. Um, sorry for the little delay there. Um, technology in our virtual world, we can only control it so much, unfortunately. Um, but we got it working, and that's what's important. So um, we won't get take too long. Um, my reminder is is that if you have any questions for today's speaker, um, please use the question and answer function, and we will do a question session at the end. Um, and yeah, so uh, without further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce one of my really good friends who I've had the pleasure of volunteering with and hearing this story a couple times. Um, it's super inspirational and I'm very excited to share that with all of you. Uh, so without further ado, this is Lyle Turner from South Africa and he is sharing his experience with HD and his uh, climb of Mount Everest. Take it away, Lyle. Hi everyone, uh, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to join uh, you guys. And um, congratulations to everyone in setting this all up. I think it's quite a special achievement and especially during these times, I think it's great that we are still able to do these sort of things and connect and share our stories in some way or another. Uh, yeah, it's a great privilege for me to be here. Um, I am from an HD family, so I think that makes these stories even more uh, hard hitting. And uh, so I think one of the biggest lessons I took from, you know, uh, being from an HD family was when I started learning about kind of our family linked to HD, I very much put my life on a time clock because I obviously didn't know the full extent and didn't have a lot of information. And um, that just accelerated me into, a, into a, a much more kind of driven individual to get everything I wanted to get done in life before something, so to speak, catches up to you. Uh, I was probably told by my father in my early teens, uh, I kind of suspected there was something up in the family, just in terms of not fully sharing with me. I, I, I always had a big, um, I was really intrigued with my grandfather who I never got to meet. meet. And uh, so when I felt a little bit of resistance to the information, uh, I knew there was a story there. And when I did see my, my uncle, become symptomatic, it was really when my father addressed and kind of sat, sat me and my sister down and, and said, there's been this, this thing in our family. And at the time, I didn't quite think too much of it because I didn't have much information. And, you know, one was still going through um, my school career. And it was really when I left school where I really wanted to dive in and lean into to, to Huntington. So I kind of reached out to the global community. I didn't really know anyone at all uh, within the community. And, you know, within the first year, I was attending conferences and, and doing my part. Um, and at that point, my father still had never been tested. Uh, so obviously, he and myself didn't know kind of what our, what our status was. Uh, and, and that kind of really led me also to want to do more within the global community. And, you know, not being from a medical background, I, I was always a kind of adventure person. And I decided, you know, I was, I was intrigued with Everest, but this kind of really put me over the edge to, to want to do something, uh, you know, just out of also frustration. You're doing so much you can, but also I want to be doing even more. And I think that was that special with with kind of my starting point saying, if if my if your life was on a timeline and you knew there's a potential um, closer deadline, what 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 more things are you chasing at the end of the day to 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 live life to the fullest? And you know that's one of my biggest appreciations, you know having a met a whole another family in the world, but also just uh, pushing oneself to commit to these kind of bucket list things. Uh, and then the, the whole Everest journey really started. And, um, you know, I think it's, it's so, it was so special. Uh, just before I um, 
went to Everest, my father was tested and um, he tested G negative. Um, and, you know, it was, a, it was a special time, but even more so for me to make sure that I get home safely and I can dedicate a lot of my life to, to HD and, and not, you know, make silly, a silly mistake on the mountain that can cut one's life short. So, so, you know, I, I think it was, it was special times for our family because we had been littered with HD for over four generations. And um, I started the, the process with my dad in terms of genetic counseling because I knew at any point if, if he got his results and it, it came out positive, I wanted to also know quite immediately uh, for myself. Um, and, and that's just how I, how I went wanted to go about it so even a bigger kind of sense of responsibility to go to Everest and um, and and you know come off positively with no complications uh, Everest in itself I think was such a special journey I I want to share kind of three quick leadership lessons with you guys from what what I experienced and the first being is that adversity is a privilege uh, and I say this because when I was there the first year, I got caught in a 7.8 magnitude earthquake. Um, I was lucky to survive. We lost 22 people on the mountain, the greatest disaster in Everest history. Uh, and I was in the thick of it and very blessed to come out of it. Uh, and when I say adversity is a privilege, I mean it in two parts. One as in uh, what we go through and we have no control of, in my case, and, and I think a lot of people's cases, that's our Everest story. You know, we have no control um, over that adversity. Uh, and then the second part of adversity is a privilege is what we purposely put ourselves through. And I think that's got great uh, depth into what we can learn as individuals if we are putting ourselves through some form of adversity and, and really uh, pushing ourselves to be doing more in life. And the, the earthquake on Everest was a big, had a big impact on my life because you, you also come home with certain feelings of things like survivor's guilt and, you know, why was I spared and someone not? Because your, your margin for error there, obviously in an in a avalanche is so, so small. Uh, but, you know, I felt, Obviously, I, I hadn't finished what I started and I wanted to go back, but there was a lot of adversity to get over um, just from that, that one event. So I think it's always special to know and have an outlook that adversity is a privilege because it just, it just kind of gives everything a bit of a, a bit of a neutralizer in terms of your thoughts and how you can tackle something if, you, if you're seeing it as that, as with that positive outlook. Uh, the second big takeaway I found from the mountain was really to take charge of your climb. And I think as individuals, we can also relate that to our lives to really take charge. Uh, so again, that, that means in, in two parts, it's really, I was taking real charge of my life at, at that period to wanting to do more and feeling frustrated, not being able to do enough. Uh, and that was my way. Um, and then even in order to be successful, you're really taking charge of your life at that period to get yourself there, to be safe, to come home and to get the desired outcome you're trying to achieve for, for the cause. Uh, and I think that's really important for us to realize as young leaders in the world. Um, these sort of things are really places where you can lead change. And we do need more leaders within the, with the, within the HD space and within our broader uh, global communities. So I think it's, it's, it's important to know to take charge of your climb, whatever that climb is that you are undertaking within the period of your life. Uh, and, the, and the last kind of huge takeaway was, was your, your, your style, how you want to climb, how you want to live your life. Um, and this is, there's a big movement to this within the global leadership community um, in what style you lead, uh, whether it's in your home environments, whether it's in your work, uh, whether, whether it's within your family, 
your style is important uh, because it's how we build effective teams. Uh, and it's and it's also how opposing interests in any given situation um, can con can um, get together to a greater goal of sorts. Um, and on Everest, why I talk about style is very much within our group, we were a very experienced bunch of people, but we also went against the grain in terms of our style of climbing. We didn't go the traditional route of climbing kind of with a really slow um, approach and also staying together, so to speak. If someone was faster, they would go ahead uh, and put the team in a better position at any given point. And if someone was faster, you're not putting yourself at unnecessary risk in certain areas um, just by virtue of the fact that you could be in a different place. And that paid real dividends because on the way down, one of our team members got really ill with um, high altitude pulmonary edema and cerebral edema. So it's the buildup of fluids on the lung and the brain. And uh, so having, having us at different positions on Everest helped save his life because we had effective communication back to our team doctors at base camp. And, uh, you know, he walked away uh, with a successful rescue mission because we all climbed in our own style and, and did things our own way, but also staying firm to each other till the uh, collective objective and also protecting each other. So I think that's really important for, for any trip and, and any challenge people are going through in life. Um, one thing I always like to mention to people that's relative to everyone's uh, Huntington story or whether it's just your, your normal life is I'm a big believer in um, if you don't look after yourself, you can't look after other people. And it, it may sound initially like a bit of a selfish comment, but I find it so important, especially in the mountains, one must realize if, if you're not uh, hydrated or, or drinking or looking after your health, you can become a liability to your your fellow climbers around you. So it's so, so important to uh, make sure your, your, yourself is fueled physically, emotionally, mentally. Uh, and I think it goes back to an everyday life of people climbing their own kind of Everest or climbing their own personal mountains. We have to be looking after ourselves first to give our families the extra 10% they may deserve. Um, you know, controlling our headspace to give more to people around us. And uh, I think in, in, in some families or even some cultures and just, I think we, we sometimes miss that opportunity um, looking after ourselves first. We, we so often putting others first, which is amazing and admirable, but I just do want to remind people to always be looking after their headspace first and, and you know, checking in with, with oneself every, every now and then. Um, so those were some key um, learnings I took away. And um, I think it's so important that we, we highlight kind of takeaways from my experience. Uh, those are kind of leadership lessons, but in terms of overall HD lessons, it was, it was just the greatest moment of my life really to to share uh, a road with people that had in, been impacted with something that my family had been um, it had been 200 years of our family being impacted and so like when I stood on top of the world it was just so special it felt like something put to bed for my family but it just felt like the start was something for me to, to as a kind of springboard to, to give more to the, the community at large. So obviously in the build up, we had a whole lot of names on, on a flag of people that had passed. So, you know, in that moment, it's a personal, it's a personal thing having me stand in that position, but, you know, collectively, it felt like a breakthrough for me and with, with all those families, just to just to share a, a, a journey is, I think, so special. And I've gained so much from the community in terms of another family. And I think it's so important to 
to pin that down to really embracing the the larger community at whole and and sticking your nose in it and wanting to meet your your broader based family uh, I wouldn't have had that privilege if if I didn't you know think of it in that light and you know I'm just internally grateful for everyone I've met and everyone that's dedicating part of their life to to HD you know they're the they're the real heroes in, in my book and uh, I think it's I think it's amazing and um, just congratulations to to everyone at HDO for setting this up I hope there's a few questions um, there's so much to kind of cover but it, I just wanted to bash through a few points of, of my journey with you guys so thank you and um, I look forward to meeting you all at some point clap for you because you can't hear anybody else. Um, thank you so much for sharing that. I heard it a couple times and I think each time I take something new away from it. Um, so one of my th thoughts is, is since you've done that, like what have you taken back from that and where do you want to go with it? Like what's next for you? Look, I think what's next is always the, the question and uh, I think from a pure adventure point of view, it's, it's always two months away, which is tough. And I, I did plan to want to do another mountain this year, but obviously uh, global pandemic dependent, I've pushed it also a little bit. So I, I think it's, I, I've worked hard just to also be better at, at a kind of normal integrated life because everything goes so fast in those times. And um, there's not much room for for a lot of other things, so I'm I've just been pinning my life down to just a bit of normal, which I don't really like, and I think that's a challenge in itself. But I'll definitely climb again, and um, um, so that's kind of where my my adventure spark will be. You know, always always in the in the mountains because it. I've also learned you, you can't just always find your next Everest, you know, once it's quite amazing to achieve a goal, but sometimes, or a dream, sometimes you, in my book, you wish you don't achieve it because it gives you the same drive to, to keep on chasing it. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I can't be, have that outlook because you have done something that you've always dreamt of. So it's just it's just picking up the pieces afterwards because there is also always a dip after you achieve a dream and um, it's just to re, re kind of collect your life and see what the what the next step is and that sometimes takes a lot of reflecting and time mm -hmm. so there, there's nothing specific on the burner right now that's well I think that's good for you because like you said you don't do normal like you're always on the go and you always have something on, like planned or whatever. So that could be your new Everest, right? Like just finding normal, yeah. that's your new challenge. Um, yeah. But I think that's a great point too, is that, you know, after you do something that is really big or you achieve your dream, it's okay to, you know, not have to do that next best thing or that next big thing, like take time for yourself and reflect and grow. Yeah. So I think that's awesome. Um, one of the questions that I had, because I think you pointed out, you know, taking care of your mental health and, and especially on the mountain and those challenges to overcome all that. Um, we face this global pandemic and I know mental health is a big thing. What are things that you've done either on the mountain or now to, you know, bring mindfulness or self-care to yourself? Yeah, look, one of the biggest things I do with myself on a daily basis, which is relative to climbing and, and life, is I check in with myself every day. And I give myself something, a relative term, a one to 10 number. You know, what, what's my number today? Uh, because even on, on, a, on a mountain, when you're under, as a team, under a lot of stress, with a lot of physical exertion, and then there could be a week where you just snowed in with bad weather. People go through the highs of being down because of exertion and being down because of isolation. Um, so it's very relative to what people have gone through. And I found it astounding how on a mountain, you can start your climb wherever it is, or even a day asking your friend what their number is. And it can be, oh, it's a 10, I'm fine. One hour later, they can jump to a seven. And it's like, I don't even know how that's possible, you know, because generally in normal life, people just say they're fine. 
and fine can mean 10 and fine can also mean three. So how do you know when, when the alarm bell is to be there for yourself or even someone within your support system? So I find in, in the mountain context, that's where the, the number has been so erratic from a 10 to a seven to this or that. But then you can also manage your, your, your friend or whoever is in the situation. Okay, have you drank water? Have you eaten? What are you doing mentally to get you through the hours? You know, so, you know, on, on a mountain, we do like, we count through the alphabet. It's just a, a kind of trigger. And what it, whatever A reminds you of, if that reminds you of a person, you spend time with them. B, C, D, E, F, and some people just think of random things through the alphabet just to keep their, their mind busy. But I think in life, it's important for us to check in um, and give yourself a relative term and number. So I know I can't go in normal life from a, you know, I can't skip two, two, two numbers in a, in a quick succession. Then I'm not managing myself. Uh, and then I've then I have triggers and things to get me out the hole when I'm in it, so to speak. I love that. I use that numbering system for some of my clients when I'm doing counseling. And like, to your point, they'll say, oh, I'm a two. And it's like, okay, well, what does that mean in your world? Like, <laughs> fine. Yeah. Well, what does that mean? So communication, yeah. just checking in with yourself is, is yeah, really great point. <clears throat> and how do you know to, how to fix yourself if you don't know what's wrong? So I think that's a really good point to reflect on. So um, I don't have any more questions here, but I do have some comments from some attendees. I don't know if you can read them, but I'll share. Um, one is thank you so much. Thank I you. feel like we all let this illness define us and <clears throat> it's so wonderful that you used it for good. And then another person says, I know your sister and they are very proud of you and what you have done. Um, so, uh, da, 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 da. and then somebody said, you are a 10 today. <laughs> I hope you feel that way. <laughs> <laughs> and somebody else said that you are, thank you so much. And you are an inspiration. And I promise neither of those were just for me. <laughs> thank you, Jackie, if they were from you. <laughs> no, good. deep down, you know. Um, yeah. So thank you so much, Lyle. We appreciate you. Um, do you have any final words that you would like to share? Uh, final words is, guys, I know we all kind of climbing a, a, a mountain for HD as a whole, um, as a community and as a larger spectrum, uh, the condition. I think the, the, the best thing for us is just to keep engaged. Um, we need more leaders within the world spectrum and within the HD uh, community. You know, the, the young leaders are the future. So just remember, find your find your place within the system, find your tribe. And uh, I think there's so many great people to connect with and make an impact. Uh, and I think it's our duty to do so. So I, I urge you to keep being involved. I second that. Thank you, Lyle. Um, and thank you everybody for tuning in. I really appreciate it. And I'm sure Lyle does as well. Um, everybody from what I'm gathering was really inspired. So well done. Um, next on our track one is we have the Voyager HD research experience or update and on track two we have a panel who are going to speak about testing negative with Harriet McMillan, a genetic counselor. So you guys can leave this meeting and go to those. Thanks guys. Bye. Good to talk to you Lyle. Bye bye bye. You too Jacqueline. Let's chat soon. Absolutely.